All right, so we were looking at last time uh, taking characters and inputting them into our board. We're able to grab the row and the column of where we want to play, and we're setting this equal to a 1. Then we want to be able to print out the board right after that. At the moment, we just have once through, where we're printing out the board, reading in the input once, and then that ends our program. What I'd like to do is actually make it so that I can take this section and do it over and over again while we're still playing. So I'm going to create a Boolean variable that's going to keep track of whether we're still playing. And I'm going to name it still playing. Set that to true at the beginning. While that's still true, while still playing, two equal signs, remember, in an if statement or a while statement. While that's true, I'm going to do all of this stuff over and over again. And I'm going to tab this over. Every time that I open up a new brace, I tab everything within it over once. If you ever get lost with your braces, you can always select everything and then go under Source and Format, and that'll actually tab everything over for you nicely. All right, so while this is going on, I'm going to keep going. Um, let's see what happens. So right now, it's running down here at the bottom. So I have these two that I put in in the grid automatically. So if I say A1 down here, when it reprints, there's A1. B1, B1 got saying to an X, good. So now I'm able to actually do things. That's good. Now one thing I would like to be able to do is to make it so that every other time it switches back and forth between X's and O's. So at the moment, I'm just playing X's. I'm using this grid column in one saying if this equals one and do stuff down here. Now the zero, one, and two is pretty arbitrary. It would be nice if I could actually make it so that um, rather than using 0, 1, and 2, I made this a variable that made my code a little clearer. So I'm going to add in something called a constant. So I'm going to create a constant for what a blank square is. Final int blank. And I'm going to set that equal to 0. So now whenever I say the word blank, it really means 0. But when I put this in and say when this equals a blank, that's a little clearer than just having some arbitrary 0. I'm going to do that for x and o as well. Final int x. I'm going to use a capital X. Constants typically in Java are all caps, by the way. You'll find that in the API as well. Final int o is a 2. Notice this is a capital O, not a 0. And I'm going to say if that grid square is an x, then we're going to output an x. If that grid square is no, I'll put a no. And then also up here, I'm going to set this to be an x. That really has no change in the functionality of the code. It just makes it so I'm actually able to read it better. And so later on, when I come back and look at this in a year or two, I know what's going on. All right, so I'd like to switch back and forth between players' turns. So I'm going to keep track of that probably with a Boolean? I guess I could use an integer. Yeah, let's use an int. That makes sense. Now that I have these constants, uh, using an int makes sense. So I'm going to start off with having it be x's turn. So if turn starts at x. So if I get inside of this clean input, which is inside of here, so if turn is x, two equal signs again, I'm going to let x play. Otherwise, I know that it's O's turn. So once x does play, I'm going to set turn equal to O, and now it'll be their turn. Now I can't use two if statements in a row, otherwise x will play, and then immediately O will play over the top of that, which defeats the purpose. Now another thing is that this row and column, this applies to both players, so I'm actually going to move that outside of the if statement. Both players are going to have to worry about what row and column are played in. So down here, grid call row, come on Eclipse, do what I mean, equals O. Watch out for that. Sometimes the Eclipse will actually put in braces for you. It thinks it's helping, and sometimes it is, sometimes it's not. 
And then if they do play, set turn back to x. By the way, let me get rid of changing these two places automatically. That was just for testing purposes. So if I run this, a1, a2, a3. Good, so now we're getting the back and forth play. Now an interesting thing, it's O's turn. And if I play an A1, I can just ride right over the top of it. Well, that's kind of cheating. I'd like to avoid that if possible. So up here, I better make sure that the spot that um, X is playing in, and then in likewise O is playing in, is a blank. So that applies to both of these players. So I'm going to do that around this whole if statement. So if grid call row is a blank, then they're allowed to play there. And once again, since I opened up a new brace, I'm going to tab everything over inside of this. This allows me to, at a glance, to tell which things are in which side of which uh, blocks of code. So if it's not a blank, I probably should tell them that they aren't allowed to play in a spot that's already taken. System out. Cannot play there. So let's try it again. So A1. A1? Cannot play there. How about A2? Good. And I also did that to double check that it actually kept terminal of track of turns correctly. Because if it had played an X, I would have known I would have been doing my turns incorrectly. Now how about winning and losing? So it would be nice after we played that I could check to see if somebody won or lost. So this happens in here. If x just made a move, then I should actually check to see if x won. I'm going to create a method for this. Uh, check win. And if that's true, then I'm going to do something here. Um, so I'll print out x wins, clear the board. 